Hey everybody, hello, hello, Juliana Page here. I wanna to talk to you today about why you might not feel alive. And let me specify, why you might not wake up with excitement, why you might not have that same passion that you once had. You know, you can identify it in somebody else and you almost resent them for having it because you remember when you used to smile like that or there used to be light in your eyes or you used to glow because you are just truly content on the inside. So the answer to this is actually simple. And I'm just going to lay it out. You've probably heard it before. But the reason why you don't feel alive is because you're not doing the things that make you feel alive. You've, for one reason or another, maybe several reasons, settled for lower standards. You let somebody convince you out of something that you were inspired to do. You believed what somebody said about you. You forgot who you are, who you actually are, whose you are, and who you are in God, right? And there's other things too. It, it could also be even a fear of starting from nothing, right? Starting social media, not having a following or starting a practice or a business and not having clients yet and not being willing to, to have the courage to step into that awkwardness. But the reality is if you don't have the courage and the willingness to start from nothing, you don't have the grit. You don't have the stamina, the endurance, the character for success. You just don't, right? Like you won't see something all the way through and you'll resent those that do. When really we all have genius on the inside of us. We do. We have the spirit of the living God living on the inside of us. If we're born again believers, right? And that makes you different. That does make you unique, but it's on you to, to remember that, to take ownership of it, to walk in excellence, to hold yourself at a different standard, to not let others convince you out of what you've made up your mind to do. Because how many of you know when you decide on something, you're going to be tested almost immediately. It's like you make up your mind and then before you even start taking actions, there's something that comes to change your mind or to convince you out of it. So Here's something that I believe will help bring some, some clarity, okay? So this is going to be helpful in terms of being able to navigate from within versus without, right? Or from the outside. So what you need to get into your spirit, that you need to know that you know, know with your knower, right? You need to know that God absolutely does want to upgrade you. He wants you to have the John... 10, 10 life that is abundant to the full overflowing, right? This fullness of life though starts from within. It's a fullness of your soul. It is feeling vibrant and alive and full of joy, right? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So it starts on the inside, but yes, it's also you, it's, it's seen or manifested in your outside as well. So here's the thing. God wants to do that. But how many of you know, I have an iPhone, right? So how many of you know with this iPhone, okay, that there's times where my iPhone is telling me that I need an update? <laughs> and how many of you actually just ignore that? You're like, okay, cool. Like, remind me tomorrow. Okay, great. Remind me later. And then it gets to a point where it's just going to do it automatically, usually around midnight, because Apple probably has figured out that so many people ignore that and then they call and they are saying all these problems that they're having with their phone, but it's really because they didn't update the phone. Okay. So I just want to share this as an example. I'm a very visual person, a very practical wisdom person, right? I like to take the word and apply it to my life in practical ways. That makes sense to me. So take the example with the phone. Okay. How easy is it just to hit? Okay update, but we don't want to do that because it's going to take an hour. Things are going to happen. We can't receive calls. It's going to go through its thing. It needs to be plugged in. We ain't got time for that, right? Well, if you don't have time to hear from the source, what makes you think you're going to navigate well? If you don't have time to get tuned up, to get a check-in, right? To get spiritually fed, to literally feed on the word of God every day, 
where are you going to get your direction? Where are you going to get your energy? In your own strength? Okay. How is that working out for you though, right? We operate so much better, right? When we seek the kingdom first, then all the other things are added to us, right? So here's the thing. God does want to upgrade your life. He wants to upgrade you radically from the inside out, but he can't do that if you don't have enough space, which usually means deleting some apps. It means forgetting the former things. It means not leaning on your own understanding. It means not spending idle time on different things and allowing yourself to be distracted, right? There's many things that you can do to literally prepare a way for the Lord, create space for God to show up in your life so that you can be wise because God will guide you into the things that make you fully alive. He will do it. He formed you. He shaped you. He anointed you. He created you. He knows exactly what makes you feel alive, exactly who to connect you to, exactly when you're ready. He knows how to do all of this, right? So here is a flow that I will give you to help get back on the track to being fully alive. Cause this is not go make a vision board and start executing. This is not go dig up that dream that you had when you were three. Okay. Like some of those things God might reveal to you, but this is not like that. This is building discernment and discernment is being able to, I'll give you two types. There's two. One is common discernment that we can say is common sense. Okay. Then there's spiritual discernment. So let me break these down. Common sense, common discernment would be, I can see through a thing, right? Like I can see that this is not not a good thing, right? Like I've seen this movie before. This does not end well. I don't need to try it on. I don't need to test it out. Like I, I see where this is going, right? So that's common sense, common discernment, okay? Spiritual discernment, way deeper. This is, I can see the spirit behind the thing. I can see beyond the presentation of what's happening here. So for example, spiritually speaking, this is really good in the realm of relationships and connecting with business partners and different things like that. I'm going to send you out among wolves, right? So a lot of times we have the enemy in disguise, so to speak, a wolf showing up in sheep's clothing. Looks good, looks charming, looks godly, knows some of the Bible. But behind that, the motive, the spirit behind it is not of God, right? And that connection is toxic and it's meant to kill, steal, and destroy you, quite literally, right? So discernment is really, 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 really important, okay? So here's the thing. Discernment comes from spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity comes from devotion, okay? So another way to look at that, having a daily devotion will remind me of what makes me feel alive. It'll allow God to do a healing work in me. It'll help me stay fixed and focused on the good plans that God has for me. It will shift any desires in me that are not of God. It will have me focused on things that are lovely, pure, noble, praiseworthy. It'll fill me with literally vital energy and that feeling of alive. I don't need other people to fill me up because I'm full from that daily devotion. Then from the daily devotion, I can apply the word to my life and act accordingly. So the word that I'm given, I apply it to my life. I go through situations. I reflect, I learn experiential education. I'm getting spiritually mature. I'm tested. I'm tried, but I'm applying the word to my life and I'm growing in strength, in wisdom, and integrity, and character. And how do I know? My life is bearing fruit of the Spirit, right? I can see long-suffering. I can see kindness. I can see patience. I can see this coming out of my life from applying the Word to my life, right? That is supernatural. A situation where it's easy to react or easy to go into some sort of emotion and I'm patient, that's supernatural. Subtle to some, but supernatural, right? So that's coming from devotion, applying the word, right? And then from there, discernment happens, right? If I am literally cultivating myself, I'm filling myself up. This is self-care. I'm taking care of myself. I'm renewing my mind. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind as I'm reading the word. I'm letting it wash over me, cleanse me of all these unrighteous or impure thoughts. 
I'm letting God do a work in my heart so I can show up with a pure heart. I'm letting him renew a right spirit in me. So I'm not letting the world tell me who I am. And I'm applying that in situations so that I'm not getting rocked and infected by what's happening in the world. I'm influencing, right? And I'm using my discernment to know, is this God? Is this a good thing? Is this a God thing? It really helps you navigate the subtleties of life. Okay. Now, if you notice, this is all unseen. Okay. But this work will make you feel alive, alive, because you are actually living, right? God is your life force. He literally put breath into you. He blew into you. He blew into you. He gave you life, right? So God's life force in you, you activate that when you spend time with God. Then when you apply that to your life, you start to look like God, right? And how will people know that? They will know you by your love. That's how you know if you're, if you're of God and if you're applying what he's teaching you to your life, right? And then you can discern how God is having you show up in different things. And that discernment will literally help you. I alluded to this, but it will help you navigate relationships. It will help you know a good thing or a God thing. And trust me when I tell you, just because it's a good thing does not mean it's a God thing. And anything that God is not in, anything that he does not initiate, anything that he is not blessed, you do not want that. Unless the Lord builds the house, it will not stand. So you might get some momentum. You might throw everything that you've got at it, but you're going to come up depleted at the end of the day. And for what? And for what? Now, God can work it all for good, but it's way different if you're letting God lead. Okay, and God doesn't lead you in paths that are not good. He leads you in good paths. He's a good father, right? And he knows how to fulfill you, right? He knows who to connect you to way better than you do. So it makes a lot of sense to trust him. Okay, so and how do you learn this? You learn it by applying it. So as I was saying, discernment really helps because you can really discern what's going to bring life. What are the things that bring you life? Well, That can be tricky when the world tells you what life looks like, when the world is telling you that you have to be uh, having a certain body shape or you have to be living in a certain neighborhood or you have to be driving a certain car. You have to be a certain rank in the corporate ladder or you have to have so many kids or you have to whatever you have to be a brilliant entrepreneur with a million followers, whatever it is. Right. If you are letting that be what makes you feel alive, you're going to be chasing things that will deplete you and literally suck the life force out of you. And won't that be a sad day to wake up knowing that God gave you all of this beautiful energy and you put it in pursuits that were not for you? God didn't put you here for that. So my encouragement would be, Yes, the reason that you don't feel alive is because you stopped doing the things that made you feel alive. You stopped listening to your intuition, Holy Spirit. You stopped really taking action when you were inspired. You let other people's opinions influence you. Whatever they believed about you, you started believing about yourself. You let people take the wind out of your sails because you shared your dreams with the wrong people. You stopped dreaming because maybe you had something that didn't evolve the way you thought. Right. So the thing is, you have to decide that you want to feel alive again. And the path to get there is being full of wisdom and discernment. And you can follow this path daily devotion, seek the kingdom first. Right. That's going to develop spiritual maturity. That's going to help you really navigate between things that you thought made you feel alive and the things that God actually knows and you will experience that make you feel fully alive. Being wi- being willing to let God write your story, not the way you had thought it was, being willing to forget the former things and let God write a new story through you, in and through you, and use discernment to navigate one day at a time, one moment at a time. So that will help you, like I said, with relationships. It will help you to make sure that you don't get distracted in empty or futile things. It'll make sure that there's not a lot of confusion and chaos in your life and unnecessary drama or giving the enemy a foothold. And usually things that block your discernment, I'll give you a list. Sin, like known sin, right? Anything that you know um, that is actually a sin, that's just 
a given. You don't even need to pray about that. That's just going to block your discernment. You're not going to be able to hear God when you're intentionally living outside his will. Two, desires that you have, which are more impulsive, like these instant pleasures, right? So rather than listening to the way of escape from temptation that Holy Spirit provides, you actually go into temptation. You go and you seek pleasure, right? You're not going to hear, feel connected to God when you're doing that. You're going to block your discernment. Untreated pain. So if there's unforgiveness, if there's bitterness, if there's resentment, if there's anger, all of that is blocking the voice of God. You can't hear God clearly when you're holding on to all of these other things, okay? Because you're listening to all of this past stuff, right? That you can't really move forward in. You can't move forward when you're holding on to all of that. You got to drop the whole backpack, the whole backpack of shame, condemnation, guilt, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, regret, mistakes. God can take all of that weight, but you have to be willing to drop it and be willing to trust that there's so much more ahead for you. And there is. And then also third party influencers. So a lot of times who you're surrounded by or who you're letting speak into your life they could be enabling behavior that's not productive. They could be living an ungodly life and that looks appealing to you. So you go and you do these things and then you're upset because you're not living in the call of your life. You're not doing your assignment. You're not doing the things that actually make you feel alive. You know that these things over here, maybe they make you feel good in the moment, but they don't make you feel alive. They don't, right? If you were to be honest, they don't. So those are things that block discernment. So here are three things that I'll leave you with. These are things that will actually help you cultivate discernment in your life and really develop it. So getting back on the path, really aligning with God, his purpose, his plan for your life. Number one, desire to be spiritually mature more than you desire instant pleasure. Desire to be mature desire that because when you desire that when that becomes a priority for you you'll make time for devotion you will be able to move through the character development and be willing to go through a process rather than forsake the process and you'll become more wise and discerning okay and be able to navigate on a whole nother level okay number two is develop dependency on God. Okay. It's a lie that you can navigate well on your own. We're just not designed to, we were never designed to. So when you can humble yourself, when you can depend on God, it means that you can feed on the word of God daily, daily bread. There's a reason (laughs) that that is what you feed on to spiritually develop. You can nurture the word and the spirit of God in your life, right? You can learn, you can develop your knowledge of the spirit develop knowledge of who God is, of how all the different names of God. That's even just a great study to do. You can educate yourself and you can rest in the Lord because the more you start to understand, the more you know God, the more you know his love for you, the more you know who you are in him and what he's called you to, you can rest in not having to have all the details or not having to work your way to gain his approval. That's never the plan. And then Three to five are actually all pray. So pray continuously, pray relentlessly, and pray expectantly. So this is really how you can prevent soul contaminants, soul pollutants, gold diggers from coming in and trying to get into your life, and how you can really embrace how God activates you, how God makes you feel fully alive, because only God really knows that. And you've probably lived enough life at this point to know that the things you thought made you feel alive did not. And anything outside of you ultimately cannot sustain you. There's only one source that can. And that source being connected to your vital source of energy is what makes you feel alive. That's what gives you your strength. That's what gives you inspiration. That's what gives you the motivation and the momentum and the creativity and uniqueness. That's what sets you apart. So setting your eyes and being fixed in focus, being singular in your focus, not being double-minded because being double-minded means you're unstable in all of your ways. And just having this commitment, just decide that you want the upgrade that God has for you and you're going to make space, even if that means it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to seem selfish 
to the world because the world likes you in the dark because when you're in the dark, you can be used, you can be walked on, you can be taken advantage of. It's really useful to the world. But when you're in your power, when you're in your power, you're doing what you've been put on the earth to do. You're walking with a new mindset. You're walking with a pure heart. You're walking with the right spirit. And you're letting God lead you. And you're letting his plans and his ways, right? His glory is going to be revealed in and through you. You are literally the move of God. You're not waiting on a move. You are the move. And when you are the move of God, you will feel more alive than you've ever felt in your entire life. But it does require sacrifice. It does require your time. It does require your commitment. It does require all of you being available. So I hope this helped you. (laughs) I know that it can be intense, but I know the alternative and I'm sure you do too. So if you want to feel fully alive, you have to start doing the things that actually make you feel alive. And from my point of view, there's only one source that can do that and one source that can really help you on the journey. So my encouragement would be to develop your devotion, be willing to grow and mature and be wise and discerning and God will guide your steps. Okay. So until next time, guys.